Mini for almost one year now and it's been a great machine. I took the base 8 gigs of RAM model and the only upgrade I wanted was the 512 gigabytes of storage. It's insanely fast but also very expensive for $200 more. The only problem is that it's not user gradable and you'll stick with the storage buy. In today's video I'll show you how to expand this M1 Mac mini SSD up to 7 terabyte of SSD which is really mind blowing. This is the Quizlab Mac mini dock that will use one of your Thunderbolt 3 ports to add a whole set of ports in the front of the Mac and also one 2.5 inch SSD and one M.2 NVMe SSD. So what's up guys and welcome to a new episode here on Shades of Tech. If you're new to the channel and you like what to see be sure to subscribe for more. But before we start for full disclosure this doc was sent to me by Quizlab, so thanks a lot. But I want to make clear that no, I'm not paid or sponsored in any way. And as always, all the opinion in this video are my own. In this box, you can find a short Thunderbolt 3 cable and one USB A to USB C cable for external power if needed. Of course, you find the aluminum dock, and that's pretty much it. I must admit that at first impression, I really didn't like this product. I previously on a Satechi dock version and as far as material and design it was so much better. So it doesn't have ventilation ports so it doesn't cool down the SSD as well but then I mounted it and I saw that the SSD didn't warm up too much and that the Mac mini sitting on a flat surface really improved ventilation so I definitely changed my mind. The aluminum alloy doesn't match in quality neither Satechi or Apple build quality but it's a stand after all and after installation you won't won't touch it anymore. And at the end of the day I really like the design composition. The Mac Mini will seem to float more than it's included in the dock if you know what I mean. In the front there are three USB ports, one 3.1 type A and two 3.0, a micro and a full size SD card reader and a USB-C 3.1 port. The mounting is pretty easy, you just have to slide on the bottom part where you remove a top cover, the SATA 2.5 inch SSD will sit flush by itself and about the M.2 NVMe SSD you need to place it 45 degree and gently push it down and close it with an included screw. In my review unit the screws were included so I can't show you. They assure me they are included. Once closed the bottom cover just connect the Thunderbolt 3 cable included to the back of your Mac mini. I can say all day to talk to you about Thunderbolt 3 USB C 3.1 but what you need to know is that the M1 Mac mini has limited transfer speed for external disk with BOT bulk only transport in the order of 600 megabyte per second which is not bad but don't search for expensive and fast SSD for this dock because they will be bottlenecked as well by the M1 Mac. So let's see some real life testing shall we? As a benchmark I tested the internal M1 Mac mini SSD which is a monster it scored almost 2700 and 2800 in read and write speed. Then I tested the N.2 and the 2.5 inch SATA SSD in an external case and respectively went around 550 and 380 for both read and write being of course the N.2 the fastest. Then I tested the same two SSDs in the dock and the Endo 2 got even faster being above 600 megabyte per second and the SATA slowed down a little bit but not very much. The point I wanted to prove is that there are no downside to use this dock with the two SSD rather than have two external enclosure. I must mention that in my testing with the Endo 2 SSD in the dock I got problems of inconsistency in only in the write speed. I contacted Quizlab but we couldn't figure out what was the problem so I decided to test it for video editing and I used the M.2 for the library of Final Cut 
Pro 10, which uses a lot both reading and writing. And I use the slower SATA SSDs for video storage. At the end of the day, I had no problem to edit my last five videos, including this one with 4K Dolby Vision iPhone footage. So I guess those inconsistent reading weren't really a problem. If I have to find a downside, it's the lack of a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the front port. The Satoshi version has it and I was super happy to connect my with iPhone for video editing. Now I have to go on behind the Mac and it's so annoying. The retail price is $129 but it's often on sale at $99. You will be thinking why you need to spend those extra $100 if you already have external SSDs. Well first it will make your setup neat and clean, removing any extra dangles. And second, it will free up the ports on the back and third, it will give you ports on the front and the car reader, which is very, very convenient for anyone that uses a camera. But better than Satechi, $99 is the same price of the Satechi dock, which has only one M.2 slot. In my opinion, it's a good price with Satechi. You have better build quality, but can't add the 2.5 inch SATA SSD, which is a great way to add chip storage SSD. If Satechi had this option for a slightly higher price, it would be very hard to choose between those two, but right now it doesn't exist, so this is one of the few products that do both the M.2 and the SATA SSD at the same time. So this wraps up for today. Let me know what you guys think about this product. If you have any question, please leave a comment. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And as always, stay tuned on Shades of Tech. Ciao!